All right, today I have a beer walk-in cooler that's down. So that means drop everything and get over there. All right, so they've removed all the product. They've moved it over to another, another cooler for now. So I'm gonna do all my checks in the walk-in box before I get on top of it. You can see both evaporator fans are running. All right, so our fans are running. This schematic showing five fans. We obviously only have two fans, but because our fan motors, evaporator fans are running, that's telling us that four is hot and then that our neutral is also getting to this F terminal. So at this point, I don't really need to take my meter out and test here. I know there's power here. Okay. Now at this point, I'm going to test this liquid line solenoid. And if there's power there, what that tells us is that this thermostat is good. We don't need to test it. Okay. My goal at this point is to troubleshoot efficiently. Okay. I don't want to have to take my meter out. Okay. So we're going to go test the liquid line solenoid next. All right. Next, I'm going to check my solenoid with my magnetic fuel detector. That's yeah, the camera sideways here. We do have power at the solenoid. All right, so we do have power at the solenoid. So that tells me this thermostat is in the closed position. Okay, so we're going to complete our circuit. We need both sides of the circuit to complete it. So that tells me my neutral side is coming through as well. Our circuit's complete. Now this is telling me my solenoid has power. It doesn't mean the solenoid's working and the solenoid's opening, but we do have power there at this point. All right, so next I'm gonna get up on top of this box. It is super tight up here. So this is why you don't wanna be going up and down. You just wanna make sure that you're doing all your checks in the box. So I'm gonna do my best uh, Bruce Willis diehard impression here and crawl through this web of mess. All right, so I did edit that out. I'm pretty sure you guys didn't want to hear me panting as I'm crawling through this mess of wires and dust. And as you can see, the unit is very dirty. It has not had a maintenance in a really long time. This is the first time that I'm servicing this unit. All right, sorry, I know this is a little bit blurry. This is the actual schematic from the panel. This is a super old unit. Um, that's the best one I could find. So I'm gonna start by checking my power in and my power out of my contactor. All right, so I'm gonna test the incoming power here. So L1 to L2, we got 213. L2 to L3, 214. And finally, L1 to L3, we have 213. And we have no power out of the contactor. All right, so I do have power into my contactor. Okay. But I have no power out. So what that means is I'm going to focus my attention on this coil and why isn't this coil getting power or is it getting power? Okay, from there we're gonna troubleshoot upstream or downstream. All right, so we're gonna test this contactor coil for voltage and that's gonna tell us if the contactor is bad or if we're not getting power to it. So we have no voltage to the contactor coil. All right, so we do not have power at this coil. So what we're going to do now is troubleshoot downstream of the coil. So if we come here, this is a straight shot from the contactor. Now this wire could be broken, but I'm going to focus my attention on the other side of the coil. So this side here, so I'm going to work backwards from here.
and we come here to a dual pressure switch. So this is going to be my next test point right here. All right, so I'm going to take apart this pressure switch so I can test for voltage. It is a dual pressure switch, so it can trip on low pressure or high pressure. All right, this specific one here does have a manual reset on the high pressure side. So either So either side could be tripped. So I'm just testing the ground here just to see if there's voltage. I'm not I don't really care what voltage, I just want to know if there's voltage there. And at this point I'm going to test the cross. So I test the cross, I get 214. That's telling me this switch is in the open position. So at this point, we're going to kill the power. I'm going to see if this manual reset is tripped. All right, it is tripped. All right, so that pressure switch was tripped. We've reset it, and we'll get our power from here. And then P1 will be will be uh, wired into our L1 right here. So now our circuit's complete, and our contactor coil now has power, and it's pulling in the plunger and the contacts are closing on the contactor and it's completing the entire circuit now. All right, so our pressure switch is set to 225 PSI. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this condenser coil and then I'm gonna gauge up and see how close we are getting to that 225 PSI. I'm just gonna hit the fast forward here just so you don't gotta sit here and watch me do this for 10 minutes. So whenever using this spray, you always spray like on a downward angle and I always spray from the bottom to the top. And we're just gonna let that Viper sit on there and do its magic. Okay, so always make sure you put paper towel at the bottom uh, or else all this stuff will leak through the seams and you just have a mess everywhere. Alright, so the back rows of the condenser are nice and clean now. Now I'm going to concentrate on cleaning the front section of it. So I was aiming towards the back section earlier. So this one needed to be sprayed down twice. The coil's nice and clean now shine the light through we're good all right so at this point we're gonna gauge up my ambient temperature is 69.4 all right so to figure out our head pressure it's gonna be ambient plus 30 Fahrenheit so in this case we have 69 let's call it 70 just to make the PT chart calculation that much easier so 70 ambient Plus 30 condenser split gives us 100 Fahrenheit. So we're going to go to our PT chart here. At 100 Fahrenheit, we should be at 116.9. So let's call it 117 PSI. All right, so we have 155 PSI. We should be at 117. Head pressure's really high, okay? This condenser motor is kind of rattling around. It's not sounding great. So I'm gonna check what it's rated for. So it should be pulling 0.84 amps. And we are pulling only 0.51 amps.
Okay, I'm just going to check the voltage at the motor. We do have 212 volts. So at this point, we do need a condenser motor. So you can see the contactors in bad shape as well. That L1 terminal is done. All right, so I changed the contactor, changed whatever wiring and connectors need to be changed. And I changed the condenser motor, so we're going to fire up here. And we're going to check our amp draw. We're getting 0.84 amps. So if we compare it here, the rating is 0.84 amps, so we're right on. So I'm going to let it run for a little bit longer, make sure the amperage doesn't change. We're right to spec. Alright, so my head pressure has come down to 108. So if you look at my condenser saturation temper temperature, it's 95. If you look at my ambient, it's 67. Okay? They're off by 29 degrees. This is a 30 condenser split. This is really good pressure right now. Okay, you can see the correlation there as the pressure goes up. So my evaporator coil is clean now. There's a huge gouge in there. This unit's in pretty rough condition. So we did cycle down to temp here. 36 Fahrenheit. I did notice this door closer is in the incorrect position. The door's kind of banged up here. So probably this door closer is having issues too. So, oh yeah, as soon as I close the door, the whole door skin's flexing here. So that's why they have that in the up position. And then down here, the door's banged up pretty badly. All right, old R12 Junker here. So I was able to get to cycle at 36. As you can see, this unit's on its last legs. The door's not sealing. The vapor coil looks terrible. Um, I did break one of my rules here. I know when you guys call in, I always tell you I need to know the suction and head pressure so that we can paint that picture a little bit better. In this case, I didn't take the suction pressure. Reason for that is I was terrified to open that suction port valve. Uh, I was terrified that that packing was going to leak or something like that. Last thing we need is for all the R12 to leak out and then you know something that's fixable becomes no longer repairable or feasible to repair it. Okay? Also, make sure you're checking your ambient temperatures. So in this case, it was 70 Fahrenheit. I know that's what we always assume it is, but if it was 80 or 90 Fahrenheit, it would have changed what our head pressure should have been. So make sure that you're using your air probe to check your ambient temperatures.